Welcome to Saturday Sesh. My name is Trey Rickling. I'm with the Academy of Cannabis Science. And we've been doing this work since 2015. We've been educating students, preparing them for the cannabis industry. And it's a joy to be here with you today. Today, we are particularly proud, excited to bring you to Shambi Wilson of Smoke and Mirrors Cannabis Consumption Lounge in Las Vegas. It is the first non-tribal, legal, regulated cannabis lounge in the United States. And let me make sure to pin you in here. Welcome. Good morning to Shambi. How you doing? Good. Hope everybody's doing well. Good to have you. So do you mind telling us uh, just briefly, um, mm. we know you're running the, running the show there, you're managing the operation, but let's take a step back. How did you become involved in the cannabis industry? Um, I became in, uh, involved in the cannabis industry very early in my youth. Uh, my mom, she sold weed. Uh, most of my uh, friends around that time, their parents sold weed. I had a few cousins and aunties that sold weed. So I've always been around weed. Um, once we, once le weed became legal, I decided to put my knowledge into play. Maybe I can make this a, a career. And so I uh, jumped into the industry um, as a bud tender and loved it. I, it was it was amazing. Like I can actually be around weed and still to this day, uh, all the weed that I see, it's just like, this is, it's, it's unreal to see this. So I enjoy it. Um, I enjoy cannabis. It's one of my, the, the main staples in my life. So now I made a career out of it. So, yeah. That's so, so nice. And, and although you have that family experience, you've also got professional experience that, that led you to this point too. Could you talk to us a little bit about that? Cause I know you spent some time in the retail space as well. Yeah, yeah. So I was a, uh, a butt tender first. I was a butt tender for uh, four months. And then um, looking around the dispensary at my coworkers, I realized that I was the eldest <laughs> uh, person there, the more, the most knowledgeable one when it comes to, you know, uh, to, to when it comes to talking about weed. And uh, so I decided to go into management to, uh, to give to, to share my knowledge to uh, share my knowledge to the young the younger generation and also my work ethic um because you know most people that work in the weed industry not most people i'm not gonna say everybody but they tend to you know take it easy like you know they're real laid back they don't understand it it's still the job you still have to perform well so i i wanted to teach them about that and show them that they can really have a uh, career in this industry if they work hard and perfect their craft. So that's what I do now, manage. <laughs> and not only are you working hard, but you had a long night last night and still showed up for us. So thank you very much. Yeah, yes, it's, it's okay. I'm always working. So being the first, you know, that's, that's, I don't have to tell you what a challenge that is, <laughs> but we know, you know, one of the challenges is, and one of the nice things and the challenges is our um, community of, of cannabis consumers is so diverse and what people how people experience cannabis is so diverse. So when y'all were developing the culture and the setting and the feel of the place of smoke and mirrors, um, how, how big of a challenge was that? And then what are you hoping as a first time consumer, when I walk in, what are you hoping that feel is for me? What's the vibe at smoke and mirrors? This is it, Troy. We wanted to create a vibe. We didn't want to create somewhere where you can come in and party like a like a regular bar, like with alcohol. Like you come in and think you're going to be doing shots and right. got this crazy music playing and everybody's dancing on the bar and dancing. We didn't want that vibe. We want the chill, laid back vibe where you can look around and be like, hey, I, I like being here. Mm -hmm. We have a DJ on some days. Um, he, they're, they're pretty good at reading the crowd. So um, if we have a bunch of uh, older people, we'll play older music. Uh, if we have a bunch of uh, younger kids in the lounge at the time, we'll try to create uh, sounds to where they can be comfortable with so they can lounge and not feel pressured or, you know, enjoy, enjoy their surroundings. And we did that um, pretty good, pretty good. When uh, people come in, the first thing they say is this is a vibe. And that's the the exact thought I want them to have. Because I, like I said, I don't want people to come in and think that they're going to be partying. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, I want to give people a space where they can come in and enjoy cannabis. And, and although a lot of your customers are probably used to the idea of like walk in a bar, sit down, have a drink, um, it's still new. So can you talk to us a little bit about that customer service, handholding, welcoming, kind of helping people get grounded in the space? Like what are some of those conversations that, that you just have naturally now to help people understand this is a real and normal thing? Um, well, we get a lot of people from um, states that are not legal. And they come in, the first thing they say is, okay, so how do we do this? And it's pretty simple. You come in, you order some weed and you smoke it. Um, but we have to go into detail with them because we have uh, um, pe people who have never tried dabs before. And we have a special dab rigs. We have honey badgers and puff coals that these devices I've never seen before. And I've been doing this for a very long time. So I had to be trained how to, on how to work it. And so had, so is my staff. We have weekly trainings on how to work these devices. So when people do have that question or they want to experience something different than just rolling up a joint and smoking it, um, we have that to, uh, we have that knowledge to give them. Uh, but like I said, we have trainings every week for me and the staff and you have to take a test at the end. So. We want you to really know what you're doing uh, and how to describe a product, how to uh, read a customer and say, well, you're okay, so you might smoke a lot of weed in Idaho, but you don't smoke a lot of you know, uh, weed from Nevada or California. Ours tend to be a little bit stronger, so we have to walk you through that step. We control your ordering. Um, if you say you smoke uh, a half a joint in a month, we're not going to let you order a 10 milligram drink and a joint at the same time. You know, we have to watch what you, what you consume. So you don't, you know, mess yourself up pretty much. <laughs> and, and that's a great point. You know, um, as normal as, as people may be used to, um, let me say this. Um, although might, they might used to the bar setting, the law states and correct me if I'm wrong in Nevada, that one, you can't bring your own. So I need to purchase my cannabis from you. And then anything that I don't consume um, can't go in my pocket, in my purse, in my bag. Is Has that been a challenge for, for you all, for people who do kind of want to sneak in their own buds or stick the rest of that joint in their pocket? Or people pretty much get along and understand, hey, this is, this is the ground we have to play in and, and we're happy to do it. Well, the first part, uh, I hate this question and... I can't tell you how many times a day I get asked this question. It, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. I ask people to think about it before you, you know, say it. But people say, can I bring my own? And it's like, why would I build the space or create the space for you to just come in and bring your own? We, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I say it like uh, I'm mad because I, I hear it so much. And mm -hmm. it just, to me, it doesn't make sense. Like, you don't go to a bar and bring your own alcohol. Right. And you wouldn't even ask that question, mm -hmm. but people do ask that question. And I have to, you know, say it nicely, like, Hey, I built a very nice space for you guys to come and enjoy. And if you just brought your own, how would I make money? Right. How would we make money? There's, there's no profit in that. So please uh, buy what we have. We have great stuff. We'll probably have stuff that's better than yours anyway, but <laughs> come and enjoy our stuff and enjoy the vibe that we create. And Speaking of questions, I imagine you get a lot of them, especially if you get, you know, you get a lot of customers from states, like you say, where things are not legal yet. So it's still, I imagine, feels like Disney World and people come in with their eyes wide open. What are some frequently asked questions that, that your staff is likely to get regularly or daily? How to use a dab. Okay. How to take a dab. <laughs> How to set up the machine. Um, and people... I don't like dabbing. It's just something I'll probably never get into. But a lot of people want to come and experience that. They want to experience that dab. They, they've seen their friends do it. They've seen other people do it, and they want to experience that. So um, that's probably the biggest question that people come in or the biggest um, uh, wonder that people have when they come in. Like, oh, you guys have dabs? Like, I can dab here? I've never done that before. How do you do it? Like, trust me, come on in. I have a great lounge server. She'll walk you through the whole process so, you, so you're comfortable with it. And most of the time, like, we even have regulars that come in um, weekly and sit at the bar, and we, we know who they are, so we have their dab rig set up. They come in, do their dab, stay for about an hour, and they take off. 
Um, so it's, it's really great to have that option for people to want to experience the, the different kinds of ways to consume cannabis. And, and you said have, having regulars. I watched an uh, uh, interview you did on KSNV, I think it was, Channel 3, and you said mm -hmm. one of your, and it seemed to be kind of surprising to you, but one of your regular groups of patrons are people who like to use the lounge as a workspace. Yeah. Tell me yeah. about that. That's yeah. fascinating. And I, I wasn't thinking about that, so I'm fascinated. to so Talk to me about that, if you would. Yeah, well, we have um, a major casinos around us. We have Resorts World, um, Las Vegas, right across the street. We have uh, Sapphires. We have uh, Circus Circus. Uh, we have Fountain Blue across the way. So we have a lot of uh, places where people can meet their friends or and their coworkers. And, you know, for them working at a casino, they can't just be like, hey, let's go smoke a joint over here. Mm -hmm. They can actually come to a lounge, chill out, you know, smoke a joint and have conversations. And now we even have coffee uh, that you can uh, infuse. We have espressos, lattes, all that stuff where you can infuse that too. So that gives you uh, more of a, a welcoming uh, vibe if, if you're uh, having clients come in, um, if you're having people from out of town or just people, uh, business people that want to enjoy cannabis, it's another trick up your sleeve. I can say, you know, it's it's another surprise when you have somebody from out of town from from uh, Texas that's never done this, and you that you're you want to do business with them, and now that's a plus. Like, oh man, you you you're like a VIP in here. Like, I can come in here and, and we can work, and I can smoke weed. It's it's a pretty awesome thing. Pretty awesome thing to see. No, it is very awesome, and I I just can't uh, express enough how much we appreciate you all. Um, blazing the path right no pun intended but it takes somebody yeah. and we know those first because we were you know we were some of the first in the education space um certainly in our area and i know it's just it's harder to be first and i know we you and i've talked about there are a number of licenses that will uh, be available to other organizations but right now you know you all are are learning expensive lessons sometimes learning valuable lessons what are um we have a lot of students, obviously, who are looking for a career shift, looking for their next co ca uh, professional cannabis workspace. And you talked a little bit about some people don't get, hey, this is a job and we're working hard and we want to be exceptional with the work we do. Um, so as you're hiring staff, what are some of those skills that you, or experience that you're looking for to, to really continue to add to the staff that, that's doing such a good job? Um, well, I come from, or my trade is uh, being a bartender. I was a bartender for over 25 years. So customer service was my mainstay. Like I really uh, worked on my customer service skills to where I can read a person, uh, read how they are feeling, uh, and they can come into my bar and I can make them feel welcomed. Um, I did that for years. I did that. Like it's, I still do it to this day. I mean, I'm not even a bartender anymore, but if I go to the grocery store, and see somebody that's just not in a good mood, I'm gonna talk to them, you know, I'm a, I'm a just, I'm that type of person now. So um, when I'm hiring people, that's what I look for. Like, is this a passion for you or is this just a job? I don't want people that's gonna come and just say, oh, you know, I just need a job. I'm unemployed, I've been unemployed for this long. I, I just need to work. I don't want that. I want you to be passionate. I want you to like people. Cause a lot of people really don't like people. And they don't want to conversate with people. And even though it's your job, they still frown at it. Like I have people, I worked in restaurants where people, they get sat at a table and they're like, another one? Like, that's not the attitude you should have in this industry. I want, like me, if I still got sat at a table, I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm running up to the table. Like, hey, how are you guys doing? Can I get you anything right now? Can I make you feel more comfortable? And that's what I look for in my staff. You have to love people. You have to love what you're about to do your craft. You have to take uh, take pride in it. And if you don't take pride in it, I don't I don't want to work with you. So, I mean, but I have a really great staff. They're all friendly. Uh, sometimes I think too friendly. They get on my nerves, but as a boss, they're supposed to, but I love them all and, and they're great people. So, you mentioned um, in your retail experience, cannabis retail, that you were one of the older staff members on, on the floor. So, did that help inform you as you're looking for people to serve the public as a reminder, hey, cannabis diverse, uh, the uh, community is diverse, all ages, all backgrounds, all belief systems. Um, has it 
have you found the memory of being the oldest on the floor um, to remind you say hey we get, we got to represent we can't just have 22 year old 25 year olds working in the shop here we're working in the lounge yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool. Like, like you said, uh, cannabis is very diverse. And you also have to think about, like, times change. Like, I remember when I was a young guy talking about, look at this old guy. You know, I remember, I remember being that guy. And now I'm the old guy. And I just step back and let them do their thing. Like, they have to be them. I'm, I don't want to control anybody or make anybody feel they have to act a certain way. Be you. Please be you. Because I'm going to be me. I'm going to be the old guy the, with all the wisdom and you can be the crazy kids that are running around the store. That's fine. You know, as long as we get along, as long as we uh, can work together, but I let people be there. Like I'm, I'm not going to try to control you because I don't want you controlling me. Um, you, you keep me young and I'll keep you, uh, your, 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 your brain well fed with knowledge uh, from my experience. Sometimes I'll have a student come to me and, and they're my age or older and they're like, well, you know, I just don't see people that look like me when I go in the store, right? I don't see, I don't feel that connection. Do you have many older um, applicants for jobs? And are you just as open to hiring older folks, people as old as you or older to be on the floor? And what would you say to that person who's coming to me with that question, I guess, is the question. Sure, sure. I don't care about your age. I don't care how old you are. I care about your passion, your work ethic. That's what I care about. I can if if I can get a ninety year old woman to come talk your ear off about cannabis and how she loves it and make you buy more stuff. Hey, <laughs> she's hired. So age is not really a requisite for me. Like um, I I want your knowledge. I want to see how you enjoy uh, working with people and talking about cannabis every day. You have to love it for me. Thank you. Thank you. I just, I wanted our folks to hear that um, yeah. or, or your take on that rather. Um, let me ask you, you, you keep referring to knowledge and passion. How important is education in the work that you all do? You talked about testing. Um, how important is that knowledge base to the, to representing smoke and mirrors? Well, um, like anything, if, if you're a car salesman, you have to know what kind of car you're selling, what the features are, what this car is going to do for you. And that's the same with cannabis. Like there's so many different strains now that you have to know what this strain does. And we even have, uh, we, we have to give you, uh, legally, we have to give you the printout of all the terpenes and uh, everything that's in the weed. So if, if a person is asking you, hey, so what is mercy? You have to know how to ex explain mercy and what it, what it does to you in the body. So you have to know what you sell. And, and that's one thing that I look for uh, when I'm interviewing people. Like, do you know what you're talking about? Like, do you know what a terpene does? Do you know what a, how, to, uh, how to roll a joint? Do you know how to set up a bong or that type of stuff? Like, you have to know your product. So are y'all rolling joints for customers? Or showing them how? Um, if, if they ask, if they ask. We've only had the girls been asked a couple times, but I told them, you know, it, it's on you guys. Like, if, uh -huh. if that's a, another part of your customer service skills, and it, it'll probably make you more money. Uh -huh. um, but we had a couple of girls. And I mean, but, but one thing is, it's it's time consuming. Um, if a girl has uh, three tables and she's rolling joints for everybody, it's that's a little time consuming. But I so I try to keep it on the low. But if somebody asks, we mm -hmm. we 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 will do that for you. We okay. definitely will do that for you. You mentioned not just smoking, vaping, dabbing, but you also have infused beverages or uninfused beverages. Mm -hmm. You can do like the virgin beverage. I'm looking at your menu, and if anybody's not familiar yeah. with smoking mirrors, I put the link in the chat. So if you want to check out. Uh, what's on the menu while we're talking that might be an interesting thing for you so talk to me if you would a little bit about the the beverages because i can get non-infused as i understand i can get a yeah. um, a low dose or a higher dose how, how does that work and, and if i'm your customer how are you talking that up how are you explain that to me if i'm i'm totally green okay so we have uh the doses that we have is uh the, is uh 2.5 milligrams 5 milligrams and 10 milligrams and we have uh, mocktails. Uh, my favorite mocktail, if you guys are looking at the menu, was called the Godfather. 
Um, we're also doing a collaboration with uh, Jerry Garcia from uh, Grateful Dead. He has a drink on there. It's called Electric Kool-Aid, which is also another good one. But we also offer a uh, non-alcoholic uh, beer uh, also. I mean, of course, we have our coffee program, a latte program. So if you want to, if you never experienced a drink with cannabis in it, we can do that for you. And like I said, the dose, and like I found out, uh, one of my friends came in last night and she's a real big smoker. Um, and she's never had a uh, cocktail with uh, infused with uh, cannabis. And she had it and she said she felt it within 10 minutes. Like she's never felt it that fast ever. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Like um, what was the dosage? And she had a 10 milligram drink. Right. So it's kind of like an edible, but it hits you a lot faster because it's it's going through your blood your bloodstream faster. So yeah, we have uh we have infused cocktails. Like I said, my favorite is the uh, Godfather. Come in and try it, please. Um, and then we have a uh, non-infused or non-alcoholic beer, and also our coffee program to offer. Which is fascinating. So, um, are you also having to educate folks? I guess because you have the cannabis naive folks to explain to them, hey just that thing about onset say hey well you might not feel it till you leave us is that is that yeah. hard for some people to conceptualize or people pretty much get it no people get it people get it like uh we uh deal with people that have been smoking for a long time or you know or have a love for cannabis so they've done edibles before and they've done tinctures before so, but they didn't, they've never done it the smoke and mirrors way. So uh, right. when they come in, they're pretty much knowledgeable. I mean, if, if they're not knowledgeable, of course, we'll walk them through it. We'll let them know, you know, this might hit you uh, faster than smoking it because it's it's in liquid form, mm -hmm. but it's it's weed. Nobody ever walks out stumbling, you know, right. um, they walk out pretty high, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, it's all controlled. It's, it's all a good vibe. And, and I know you did it, maybe you said it earlier, maybe even without thinking, you talked about the personal responsibility of like uh, over-serving people. And I imagine there are a lot of eyes on you all. And I know that's one of the concerns, especially from people who are not fans of what we do and what you do, who people who, you know, legislators or otherwise who might not have voted for this to come online, um, who are paying close attention, right? And looking for any fault. Yes, sir. How, yes, sir. How, how much of a job is that for you all to, to pay attention to say, hey, like, have you had to cut somebody off, for instance? Um, never have to cut anybody off because our our lounge servers are uh, educated in um, not letting the the uh, consumer over consume. Okay. Like we can't uh, have you order a 10 milligram beverage with an infused joint. We won't let you do it. And, you know, it's 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 not against the law, but we do not want you to overconsume. And like I said, when my uh, when my uh, uh, staff are, is talking to a table, they they try to read the table. Right. Like if they uh, see that this person or this person says, you know, I'm a I'm a mild smoker, I don't smoke that much, then we'll recommend maybe getting a drink with 2.5 milligrams in it, mm -hmm. and maybe. Um, a joint to go with that uh, a little bit later, but in and even in the eyes of the CCB, you can't order like you can't have a, one person come in and at one seating and order a ten milligram joint, joint a uh, eighth of weed and an infused uh, um, joint. We can't. That just can't happen. That's that's against the the CCB, CCB rules and regulations. So first, we have to train our staff to 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 you know to to hear that. If right. you if they hear a guest trying to order too much, then like, hey, I'm sorry, I have to cut you off, but I can't let you order that much. You have to order this, and they'll make their recommendations for it, so we can prevent uh, over consuming before it even starts. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, because I know that's a question, and I know that's you know even as somebody who loves cannabis, before I moved to Washington State, um, I didn't know what it was going to be like. Right? I was like, are is it going to be like? Are there going to be people sitting on the curb outside? of the weed stores like really stoned off of their butts or and it's it's never been like that um so i think some people as you know some people just have to see it in operation to say hey no this is pretty normal like we're not over here you know you don't walk into a, a cloud of smoke that you can't see through and you don't have people stumbling out this is a normal natural kind of thing to do it's it's very normal especially for a person that's been smoking 
for 25 plus years. Um, it's I'm glad it's normal. I mean, I'm glad it's it's getting more normal as we as we grow. Um, but it's normal for me. So, and most people that that work with me, it's normal for them too. It's just a way of life. That's an awesome way of life. Yeah. Let me let me turn to some of our students on on the call here and see what questions do you all have? Because I imagine sure. you have a handful. Sure. Um, so I'm, I'm a big fan of your lounge and I talk it up, even though I work with their dispensary. I, I, I well, congratulations, sir. It, it, this is big, but Thank you very I've, much. Um, I've been reading about all the regs from the, uh, Nev what is it? The Nevada cannabis, um, the oversight cannabis compliance board. Yes, yes, thank you. And I'm thinking yeah. that's a lot of challenges. That's a lot of restrictions. So maybe I was curious from your point of view, what do you think the maybe three top challenges you have um, in having a lounge of this sort? Acknowledging that it, it's absolutely fabulous, but still there's got to be some top challenges. Yes, well, the first uh, challenge is to uh, stay compliant with our inventory. That's the first thing that CCB uh, comes in and they check that. Our end of inventory has to be on point. Like, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but the, the weed has to be tracked from seed to sale, no matter what. Like, if you go to a restaurant and they mess up your food, you know, maybe the manager can comp that off or something like that. I can't do that. There's a whole process of us uh, destroying it, um, um, logging it, and making sure our logs are correct for the, when the CCB comes and checks. Because if you have two, three, two or three things missing, they will dock you. And they will, and we don't want to lose our license because we're not taking care of our business. Um, that's probably the first one. Uh, the second one is staff staff training. Like that, they have to be uh, trained very well. Um, they have to go through training every week. That's com that CCB compliant. Um, they have to get the training done. Um, easy training, but it's just to you know make sure they know what they're doing. Make sure they know that this is still a prescription to say, you know. I um, mean, we have to treat it like it's a prescription. We have to be real careful with it, what we do with it. Um, and then um, just to, just pretty much staying compliant with the CCB. Like they have. Uh, so many rules like we had to get a filtration system that cost maybe fifty thousand dollars um so we the the room doesn't stay smoky we had to make sure that our um employees have a safe place to go uh out, outside of the smoke so if they feel that they're maybe getting a little buzz or second uh secondhand smoke we have to make sure that they have a place to go um, outside of the room where they can take a breather from smoke. They can relax. They don't have to be, you know, uh, sus suspended in the smoke all day. Um, that was another one. And then just having them keep uh, keeping their cards up. Like we had a uh, inspection the other day and one of my uh, staff members didn't have their cards up. And it's like, come on, that's the first rule we tell you. <laughs> you got to have your cards up. So just keeping my staff um uh compliant also making sure they understand like this is a this is serious this is serious business yeah okay well thank you that was fascinating i appreciate and, it thank you Liz. and for those of you outside of nevada the card you mentioned is the um is the approved card to allow you to work in a cannabis establishment right yes yes it's actually we have to have three cards we have to we're the only establishment uh, in Nevada, that has that is required to have all three cards. And the what the first card is your food handlers cards because we do deal with the, uh, the, uh, the 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 food district. We do deal with that. The second one is have a lounge consumption cards. That's so you can work in the lounge. And then you also have a they have to have a dispensary card. Also, so you have to have those three cards just to work in our establishment. Regulations, I, I hear you. It's um, but like you said, it's it's not something you can get around. It's it's something that has to be. Um, and those of you who are already working in the industry are aware. Washington State has different rules. Like a lot of every state has different rules. But what other what other questions do you all have? 
Oh, Chuck, here, let me, um, there's a question in the chat from Chuck. How do you dose individual servings of flour and dabs? Uh, uh, individual servings? Um, so you can't do over, I think it's uh, 300 milligrams per serving, no matter it's, if it's a dab, uh, and in few, I think it's 300. I'm, I'm not, don't, don't quote me on that, but, um, it's, it's around 300 where you can't do over that. And my, our staff, like I said, our staff is trained to know, um, you have to keep it at a minimum or keep it around that level. I think it's 300. Yeah, I think it's 300, but yeah, so we, we, we play, we, we pay close attention on what people are ordering. Can you hear me? Oh, we can now. Is that Chuck? Oh, sorry. This is, it is Chuck. Hello, everyone. I'm late to the call. I was having technical problems. My name is Chuck. I'm in Washington State. I'm a medical cannabis consultant. I've been working with Trey for years and years and years, and I took my original training at the Academy of Cannabis Science. And as and bravo for the uh, consumption lounge. Thank you. I, I can't wait to visit. Um, can't wait to and you. so I wonder how you would handle. So what is, is it? A grain of rice? Is it a booger? Is it, so when I get patients who most are interested in tinctures and topicals and things they're not smoking, but the ones that aren't interested in smoking, it's difficult yeah. to explain to them how much to try. So based on reading, I tell them a match head sized piece of flour to try one mm -hmm. hit. Those that have family members or people that have dab equipment around where this new person might try a dab, I got no idea what to tell them. A grain of rice is too. When I take a dab hit, I want like half a match head. So I was curious if you had a standard system, do you use weight? Do you use volume? What do you use when somebody from Kansas who's in this wonderland of cannabis wants to have the first dab hit of their life? How do you guys? approach that with dosing okay so uh first um we only produce uh packages of dabs that are 0.5 so you'll never get anything over half 0. a gram 5. half a gram yes sir and that's like okay. you said like a like a a, a match hit. it's it's about that big maybe a little bit bigger than that but um the devices that we have they don't allow you to put the whole uh, half a gram in the device. Like you have to do it very carefully. So that kind of helps you uh, not overconsume or not uh, use too much of your dad. So, but like my staff, like I said, my staff will walk you through everything. And if you want to tell your, uh, your, your patients that, um, most of the time when you do dab, you don't, uh, put the whole thing in at one time. You you do it gradually, and then you uh, enjoy the effects of it. Thank you. Yeah, and it's a good question, Chuck, because it's you know when you get into that precise measurement, it is tough um, to eyeball it, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, it is. What other questions? I know we got some curious people on the line. I know you all. What questions do you all have? Hey, Tara, it's good to see you. Hi, everybody. My name is Latara. It's Tara's on here, which is my nickname. Um, it's really nice to meet you. Congratulations on everything. I'm so happy about this. I actually live in Las Vegas. I'm okay. right down the street and around the corner. <laughs> um, come by. Please come by. I am. I actually was about to ask that because I, I was on the website. I see because I have a young adult family. My children are all grown. Um, I'm okay. a patient as well as I'm in the industry. I'm a brand ambassador for a CBD company as well as a student with Academy of Cannabis Science. And then I'm also, um, I used to work at Tree of Life Dispensary. So I am have experience with bud tending as well. So I am definitely a cannabis connoisseur. Um, so I, I was know. looking to see, um, you can do like a reservation and then if you, you wanted to, you could have like a private event there, huh? Yeah, yeah, we haven't really jumped into our private events yet. Uh, we're still working on some logistics, uh, but that is a very real possibility for the near future. Okay, um, that's I, what I'm looking yeah, for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think we have it on the website where you can book it. Uh, we haven't really, we, we've had fundraisers there, but for people that are uh, with our, our company. 
Mm. So uh, and that's that are supporting our company, our company financially. So, wow. um, but we will be starting soon. We will mm. be starting soon with the private events. So please uh, keep keep us on your radar. Yeah. Um, give us until probably the end of the uh, end, end of the summertime, and okay. we will have that available for everybody. Yeah, I was only asking. My birthday is in the fall, so I'm hoping that by that time, you know, it can be because yes. I really, um, I was actually talking to my daughter, who's a cosmetologist here, and we we have a good network of people that we know. And she was like, "Wouldn't it be cool to have like a cannabis brunch? You know, have like you know, get a group of people that consume." And in some people I know they just use CBD, you know, and, and they don't like you say you have mocktails and things like that. So um, I'm used to infusing my own stuff at home. So I was really, really glad to hear that you infuse that way I can tell my circle and we can get together, come pay you guys a visit. But um definitely interested in having a private event um for like my birthday like because that's what my daughter said when you have a cannabis brunch that would be so great because they have all kind of things that you know, they can infuse food and drink so that would be a yeah great I, I, i've never thought about a, can, a cannabis brunch so i'm gonna run that up the chain yeah i'm, I'm like i'm like are they hiring i need to come apply for a job <laughs> That's my next question. Thank you. You scooped me. So help help me because because I'm going to get questions. You know, I am Tishan B and because we got students who are like, hey, I love this. Where should I apply? And and mm -hmm. I'm not a local. You're a local. How often do mm -hmm. positions come open and are you welcome? Uh, do you welcome a resume just in advance of an opening? Yes, yes. Uh, I accept all resumes. Send them to me, uh, uh, B at thrivenevada.com. Uh, you can send it through uh, Thrive uh, Company, Smoke and Mirrors, however you want to do it. But I have a small staff that they love their job. So my turnover rate is not that high, um, which is good. Um, I probably hired maybe three, I think to be honest, three people, four people, excuse me, four people since we've been open. So I don't really have a high turnover rate, um, but we will take all resumes and just, just for future reference, just in case we have that. But a big thing with us in hiring is the cards. The cards are expensive. So um, we've had a few people get the job and couldn't get their cards right away. Like it took them maybe three months to get the cards. And so we had to move on. And I understand, like I understand, like this is, nearly four or five hundred dollars worth of cards just to get a job and if you're not working that could be very hard so um we um that's the first thing we, we look for is like that's the first thing i ask like can you get your cards immediately and if you say well you know uh, I'm gonna have to, i have to be honest with you like hey i'm i'm gonna interview more people because i mean i need to fill this role within the next two weeks not the next two months so uh just just keep us on the radar for its jobs you know we do hire um, but we also have Thrive, the, uh, the, the, the uh, dis dispensary, they hire also. So, um, the doors are wide open. And I'll tell you, if you end up doing a cannabis brunch, it, uh, make sure Taras, Latara knows, cause she advertises, she is a promoter on social media. Like few, I know you do a great job at both advertising and educating. Um, and, and speaking of, of CBD, can I come in and get a CBD infused, uh, beverage? If I choose not to, if I don't want to be intoxicated, but still want some cannabinoids. Yeah. So we'll, we'll let you just get the drink with no infusion. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we'll put some more fruit in it for you, but no, we don't have any uh, CPD uh, tinctures. Uh, we only have THC, but we do have uh, CPD uh, joints or okay. uh, cannabis with CPD, uh, low, low uh THC high CPD joints for you to consume if, if you want to do it that way. We do have that option for you. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. All right. I was only other question that I was gonna ask about uh smoke and mirrors. Um, and then mm -hmm. I'll let it go because I'll be talking forever about this stuff. I am very passionate about it. Um have you guys do you guys have brand ambassadors for the consumption lounge? Not yet. Not yet. Like we we're, we're taking baby steps, we're trying to work on getting our name out there first. Mm -hmm. um, just by, you know, getting locals to come in, getting uh, return customers, getting the people that work in the areas around us to discover us first before we start really putting our name out there. Because mm -hmm. uh, that vibe that we created for you, like if we 
overdo it, it could get ruined. Mm -hmm. So we want to perfect our craft first uh, yeah. before we start uh, branching out far as brand ambassadors and marketing in other places like that. But we want to uh, perfect our craft. At least I want to perfect the craft of the land. So we do it right the first time. I understand. I think it's going to happen, um, but I'm going to keep in contact with you. This is really awesome. Thank you so much for the opportunity. To yeah, yeah. yeah, come come down to the lounge. I'm there every day except for Mondays and Tuesdays. Okay. So please come down. And I know you're putting in the hours and, and you talk about promotion. Y'all have had, I, I continue to see you in the news. A friend of ours, Tick Sigerblom from the County Commission, I know was there, okay. I believe, on your opening day. And um, okay. And I know y'all are doing a great job to to get the word out. Um, and we'd encourage those of you on the call, you've heard several invitations today to come and check out the lounge. So do that. Like, even if you think, hey, I don't know that I'm gonna be a regular, you don't know till you try it. You know, you might have, I know tourists don't have an opportunity largely. I know there's one hotel in town that allows you to, to consume. But largely, if you're visiting yeah. Las Vegas, you don't have a lot of legal options. You can smoke up on the street, but it's not legal and you're risking a ticket, etc. So yeah. do take, take the opportunity to go and do this. They, you know, even uh, like I said, if you're not sure you're gonna be a regular, you never know till you have that first experience. And you wanna be able to tell people that come to town. It, it's, it's another cool thing. I think when people do come to town, say, hey, yeah, we can go do something. You'll go some, do something you've never done and you don't get an opportunity to do in your town. Um, keep those in mind because it's a cool, sounds like a really cool novel experience. Um, and it sounds like a good vibe. So I'm glad, I'm glad y'all are really thinking about environment because the environment's huge, you know, because sometimes you go into a, a retail store and the, the music's too loud to even get any consultation done, right? It's hard to get yeah, yeah. suggestions on what yeah. product to use because I've, I've, it's it's too much in my ear or or people are unattentive. And I've heard you say several times today how important customer service is and interaction and that welcoming environment. So I'm, I, And I didn't know that going into this call today to Shambi. Uh, I, it's so nice yeah. and refreshing to hear that as a part of y'all's living values of, of really um, – nurturing cultivating that space to make um you know our both new members of this community and old school heads and i say that lovingly uh, comfortable and at ease so i'm glad y'all are thanks for thanks for putting attention to that no worries no worries at all that was that was one of my that's my pride and joy i, I love people i love talking to people and i want my staff to share that that passion with me and they do and they have no problem talking your head off about weed, especially about weed. <laughs> Good. What are, what are the questions? You all have other questions? I always have more. I do. What's your capacity and how long is a um, client or guest? How long can they stay? Thanks, Debbie. Okay. Good, good question. Our capacity is, is uh, I think, 96. Hmm. We have a total of uh, 65 seats, I think. And then we can add some... Uh, Standing standing room guests too, um, so and and on that rate's pretty good. And then um, we we try to, wow, this this is a hard one. We 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 try to get people to stay an hour and a half. Um, that's the uh, reservation time limit. So when you make a reservation, the, the 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 company that we use sets our reservations for an hour and a half uh, until the next person uh, can reserve that table. So we try to keep that. Uh, we've really never really had to enforce it. We want you to come stay and enjoy it, but we don't want you there for five hours. You know, we have to make money. We have to turn this table. We have to uh, get more people in. The more people we get in, the more money we make. So we try to keep it an hour and a half. But like I said, we really never had to enforce that issue which is cool. Um, I hope it does happen soon. That means we're getting way more people than we need. Um, that means good for business. But like I said, we, we've never had to enforce it, but we try to keep it at an hour and a half. And we talked about, we've talked about education. We talked about programming, whether it's brunches possibly in the future. I know you and I've talked about, um, I asked you about the Grateful Dead at the Sphere. And if, if, if that crowd is showing up and you said, well, we're on it. We've, we're, like you said, we're focusing on this line of Jerry Garcia products. We 
on the website have advertised and make sure the, the deadheads know they're welcome and there's a space for them. Is there anything else in the future you got in mind? Is it is it weddings? Is it cannabis trivia? Is it um, uh, other kinds of collaborations that you would love to see you all be able to do that you just haven't been able to get to yet? Well, personally, I want to do a million things. And <laughs> I've, I've been told by my boss, you know, slow down a little bit, man. You can't do all that stuff. We have to think about it as, as a uh, as a profitable event so we have to make sure it's profitable so that's the first thing we got to do um but i want to do a podcast i want to do uh get more uh singers in there or artists in there maybe do shoot a video uh shoot in there we're we're, all, we're building a patio soon so we're going to have that option too um we want to do weddings uh i was even thinking about smoking yoga um all type of stuff that we want to do is and uh we're we're really a space um, we are uh, authorized to be a, a, a rental space for events. Uh, we, we passed that part of the CCB, so we can also have that option. We just haven't figured out all the logistics yet. Uh, stuff that we have been offered um, just wasn't profitable. You know, it's great ideas, very good ideas. We would like to see it in the future, but at the time being, it just wasn't profitable. So we have to think about that first. We have to think about um, how much profit can we make off this? Is it going to be good for business? That's that's our first concern. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I, I will ask you to keep us in mind. Um, we would love mm -hmm. to collaborate on anything we can collaborate on. You know, we've got a number of students right there in UNLV. So as things come up, we would like to know about them. So I'll, I'll follow up with you and make sure we're on the mailing list. Because as stuff comes sure. up, we want to be able to make sure our students are aware of it. If you have job openings, please think of me, think of us, because I can, I've got a mailing list that's pretty extraordinary and we can, um, we can make sure that our students who are already educated in cannabis science and cannabis culture to, if that'll narrow your field a little bit and help you get some really high quality candidates, we would love to do that. So do keep us in mind. We want to, we want to return this favor. Um, I will, I'll definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And we hope you do have to continue to have low turnover, but we know stuff happens, you know, whether it's expansion or um, some turnover you didn't expect. Yeah, and I, yeah, I can't. It's Las Vegas. It happens. Yeah, it, it's going to happen. And, and I just, I'm very happy for you. Can't thank you enough for spending your time with us on your time off. I know you mentioned you had a long day yesterday, and thanks for still being here for us today. Um, we mm -hmm. wish you all the best of luck. And thanks to our students. Thank you all for coming, for continuing to be passionate. And once again, I want to put in the plug, please go visit Smoke and Mirrors and then tell me what it's like, because I'm going to get there. I'm just not going to get there as soon as y'all can get there. So let me know about your experience right. and make sure to go in and say hello to the staff. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you all very much for spending your Saturday afternoon with us. We hope you have a great month. Happy Pride month to the lgbtqia plus community and um y'all be safe out there and thanks again thank you everybody thank you very thank much you. everybody